Francisco de Octavia VRS review. If you're fond of an underdog, it's rather hard not to hold a candle for Skoda's VRS brand. By rights, and in the grand scheme of the Volkswagen Group's thinking, it ought not really to exist at all. Seat is supposed to deal with the low-priced sporty stuff, while Volkswagen pedals the more prestigious GTI and R badges. The Czech division is for practicality, good sense and affordable functionality. The VRS version of the Fabia was spiked long ago, and the superb variant never even arrived, ending up an unseen stillborn of cancelled development. And yet the Octavia VRS soldiers on. It does so because, like the current stock model on which it's based, the car does rather fill a void. Its curious size, virtually reaching D-segment proportions while still gamely clinging to its C-segment status, means that it serves a clientele that values spaciousness and utility almost as much as it does pace and hot hatch style desirability. It is this niche and impressively loyal customer base that have kept the VRS going despite the odds, encouraging Skoda not only to update the model as part of the Octavia's broader facelift but also to build the most powerful version it has yet put on sale, the 245. Fittingly, even this seems a little counterintuitive. While the VRS may surreptitiously flaunt its relationship with the VW Golf GTI underneath, the car's volume is founded on the diesel model, a patron of the same powertrain used by the Golf GTD. So furnishing an Octavia with the VW Group's criminally underused 237 bhp by turbo diesel engine might have produced a more likely headliner. Instead, the 245 gets the same 242 bhp 2.0-liter petrol engine used by the performance edition of the GTI, the now standard VRS gets the 228 bhp variant, and is available as either a hatch or an estate. If the format doesn't completely make sense, it does at least inspire some hope in the end result. That's because although the VRS has proven likable in its own offbeat way, none of the preceding versions has ever managed to stake an authentic claim to its own USP, each being less a large Golf GTI and more a moderately fast Octavia. Armed now with not only its siblings' higher output but also the electromechanical front differential to properly modulate it, the VRS might at last make the move from fringe Omega to real-world Alpha. Skoda Octavia VRS Design and Styling For better or worse, the 245 adopts the same quad light design that was rolled out to the rest of the Octavia range. Possibly the kindest thing you could say about it is that it's more distinctive than its predecessor's look and is probably kindest to look at when plastered to the somewhat meaner arrangement of grille and bumper that distinguishes the VRS models. In the 245's case, it is obliged further still by a standard black pack that includes the mirrors, exhaust tailpipes and the front grille. It is this modest collection of colored ancillaries, along with 19 in stream gloss alloy wheels, that marks the range topper out from its stable mates. Underneath, the alterations are more significant. The EA888 2.0-liter engine's upgraded 242 bhp output is new to the Octavia although already made familiar by its earlier introduction to the Golf. The 14 bhp advantage over its VRS sibling is replayed in the GTI lineup as well, as is the slightly higher engine speeds at which it's produced. 5,000 to 6,700 revolutions per minute compared with 4,700 to 6,200 revolutions per minute for the 230. The 245 also develops 15 pounds foot of additional peak twist, albeit over a slightly shorter rev range, 1,600 to 4,300 revolutions per minute versus 1,500 to 4,600 revolutions per minute. The engine drives the front wheels exclusively, four-wheel drive remaining the prerogative of the Golf R and a single variant of the seat Leon Cupra, and is supplied by default with a manual six-speed gearbox, although the latest seven-speed DSG dual-clutch automatic is a cost option, and exclusive to the 245 because the lowlier VRS has to make do with the older six-speed unit. 
in between the wheels and the transmission is the 245's other defining characteristic, the splendidly named Verderax Curse for a differential, or, less memorably, the VAC system. The electronically controlled arrangement, centered on a multi-plate clutch, is more a chopped-up Haldex system than a traditional limited slip diff, but it serves the same purpose and can deploy 100% of available torque to one wheel, if necessary. This, too, migrates from the performance edition of the Golf GDI. Otherwise, mechanically speaking, the 245 has the same lowered passive suspension as the basic VRS, front McPherson struts and a rear multi-link, albeit with a stability-enhancing 30mm of extra track width at the back. Skoda Octavia VRS Interior Skoda can rarely be accused of gilding the lily when it comes to the interior design of its VRS lineup and the 245 is no different. The same prudent, understatedly plush high-spec Octavia cabin is carried over, flaunting the odd badge and wearing a different steering wheel but shouting about itself in no conspicuous way, save for the addition of Ritzy Alcantara seats. The upshot of this rather depends on your viewpoint. If you buy into the idea of the 245 being a somewhat buttoned-down, Q-car style purchase, the low-key surroundings are likely to appeal. If, however, you think the quickest Octavia ought to be announcing itself to its occupants with slightly more fanfare, you probably won't. For what's it worth, our subjective assessment found it appealing. The 245 semantic distance from a Cupra or a GTI ought to mean less straining for the swagger exhibited by either of its stable mates and, seats aside, the cabin chimes with the idea that you've probably made a mature and reasoned buying decision. The stock Octavia around the top spec model certainly reinforces that idea. The car's long-standing reputation for practicality is still richly deserved. There is noticeably more space in the 245 than any rival option built on hatchback underpinnings, thanks to its stretched wheelbase. This superior length ensures not only adult-sized rear accommodation but also a generous boot, which, in the estate format tested, betters a Focus ST wagons by a whopping 134 liters. The result, further enhanced by the standard inclusion of the Amundsen infotainment system, is an interior that provokes impressively few objective niggles. Skoda's failure to fit an adjustable boot floor, thus denying you a totally flat seat's down load space, as standard is one. The slightly stingy size of the cup holders and central console storage is perhaps another, a result of the car's mystifying persistence with a mechanical handbrake. Plainly, there are more extravagant interiors, but otherwise the 245 estate's basic good sense is persuasive to the point of compelling. The Amundsen system is familiar from other Skoda applications and is probably among the most worthy of the Volkswagen Group's current infotainment crop. It can lay claim to this accolade for several unmistakable reasons, its functionality is near blameless. Its presentation is very crisp and there are arguably no glaring gaps in its list of features, including the ability to generate a Wi-Fi hotspot, fast becoming the voguish choice of family buyers. Responsiveness from the touchscreen is very good, it pinches and swipes with impressive seamlessness, and the system's processor is generally up to the job of rendering the sat-nav map at commensurate speed. The shortcut keys, which flank each side of the screen, are well chosen, as are the subordinate menu choices that pop up when your hand comes close enough. The standard stereo is serviceable, although there's a 500 pounds, 10 speaker Canton sound system on the option list should you prefer. Skoda Octavia VRS Performance Anyone expecting a marked change in engine bay personality compared with the regular VRS hasn't spent much time with the EA888 engine before. The VW Group SCO 22.0 liter turbocharged petrol unit doesn't significantly alter its character between applications or outputs. It simply becomes more or less expedient at what it does. Thus, as the modest climb from 227 bhp to 242 bhp suggests, 
the latest model is very subtly better, quicker and keener, at propelling you forward in much the same gruff, linear and tractable way as it always has. Skoda quotes a 0.3 seconds improvement in the sprint to 62 miles per hour for the estate, although in the straight line, with the 19 in alloy wheels no broader than the 18 in rims they replace, it's no easier to get the extra power onto the road through the Octavia's single driven axle. We recorded 6.9 seconds from standstill to 60 miles per hour, to up. Once rolling, though, the surfeit of torque constitutes the 245's most prominent advantage, in its mid-range high yield pop, the car feels that bit more industrious than its standard sibling, an impression cheerfully embellished by the background rasp being conjured in sport mode. As ever, the really likable aspect of the EA888's gusto is that it seems to occur without a parent's train. Partly this is a factor of its refinement, the four-pot possesses no more sharp edges than the wonderfully unctuous manual gearbox that swaps its cogs, and partly it is the robust, linear delivery that resists tapering until remarkably close to the 6,700 revolutions per minute zenith of its raised rev limit. The only genuine lull is located below 2,000 revolutions per minute, where the turbocharger's blades inevitably idle. Between there and the soft limiter, the 245's motor is easily awoken, easily administered and very easy to like. Skoda Octavia VRS Ride and Handling Given the relative modesty of the changes made to the chassis, Surprisingly little of the 245's extra performance must be used for a difference to be felt. Undeniably, in our test car's case, this has much to do with the fitment of the optional adaptive dampers, an 850-pound stick not indulged on the regular VRS wagon we group tested recently. Their inclusion, alongside the range topper's lower profile tires, has a transformative effect. Even in comfort mode. One of four familiar drive settings, the car feels not only lower to the ground but also in possession of a much more rigorous attitude to body control, seeming squat and purposeful where the standard chassis gambled innocuously. Even better, despite feeling as though it has shed 20% of its spring travel, the ride comfort is significantly enhanced, the 245 evincing much the same sophisticated, firmly pliant and quiet response that makes the Golf R such a real-world wonder kind. Much like that car, in fact, the suspension's softest mode is so convincing that it makes the normal setting seem a little busy for UK roads, a familiar consequence of the dampers suddenly being asked to take their rebound duties more seriously. Not unpredictably, this halfway house quickly becomes redundant, and you spend 95% of your time in comfort, perfectly content to savor the 245's capacity for fast, obliging progress. Encouragingly, though, there is added value in indulging the sport mode occasionally. True enough, the dampers become even more fierce, but only by so much as to reach your heightened expectations for extra tenacity when cornering. This the car does admirably well, with an additional boon found in the sharper steering map, where the insubstantial default mode is replaced by something denser and thickly satisfying. Scalpel sharp or rudder sensitive this car is plainly not, but its heavy set accuracy is the ideal playmate for the stocky and relentlessly stubborn front end that ultimately sets the 245's handling apart from that of the regular VRS. While the incorporation of the electromechanical diff into the 245's front axle is obviously about negating the standard VRS's tendency to understeer at the limit, it is the superior body control being meted out by the DCC system's sport mode that initially takes center stage on the hill route. The quicker model feels not just moderately capable and amenable to pushing on but also earnestly inclined towards a more aggressive driving style. Typically, it is this augmented sense of composure that has you hustling the 245 through corners quicker, rather than faith in a multi-plate clutch, which handles the torque in a deftly impalpable way. Through multiple hairpins, the 245 is certainly faster, tidier, grippier and more tactile than any Octavia to date.
it is no more adjustable at the rear, but there's a tacky, belligerent satisfaction to be had from driving this particular VRS very hard, very hard.